Welcome to a special edition of Talk About here on Shaw TV. We have a celebrity guest, David Suzuki. David, thank you for coming in. It's good to be here. Well, you're here in Campbell River because you have an event tonight, mm -hmm. um, but you also have a book out. Uh, so uh, what's the tour about? And Well, we're doing the tour. It's actually there. It's a combination. The David Suzuki Foundation is interested in meeting coastal people in communities to see what their concerns are. What issues matter to you and to see if we can compile those and, and then decide what is it that the foundation could do to help uh -huh. uh, these coastal communities. Because of course the coastal communities are going to be impacted tremendously by the uh, consequences of climate change. So from my standpoint I asked uh, Ian Morrow who is a professor at the University of Winnipeg and has done films on climate change. I said look uh, I love the work you're doing. How about doing one on British Columbia? What oh. is the impact of climate change? And uh, so we're touring with his film. It's just a 30 minute version of what will be a 90 minute film. Oh. And at the same time, I've just written a book called Letters to My Grandchildren. And yeah. so we're bringing those along and selling those oh, okay. as well. So yeah. it's uh, multiple bangs for my buck. Yeah. Well, uh, he may not look it, but he's 79. Why are you still doing this? <laughs> Well, I, my wife has finally uh, uh, got me to admit that I'm not going to retire. Yeah. I retired from the University of British Columbia in 2001 yeah. when I hit 65. And ever since I've been saying, oh gosh, you know, I, I, gotta, I gotta retire from the nature of things or whatever. And she said, listen, Suzuk, you're doing what you believe in. You think it's important yeah. and your health is okay and you enjoy doing it. Why do you talk about retiring? Yeah. So as long as my health is there, I'm on a mission which really has to do with my grandchildren. My youngest grandchild is, is uh, seven months old. Uh -huh. And the world that we, our generation and the boomers before us, the world that we're leaving for them is radically different from the one that you and I knew when we were kids. Yeah, the, the issues that we had a seniors lady on here recently and the issues that my father faced at my age and the issues that I'm facing at my age very different. Absolutely. Our parents, well you're a bit younger than me, quite a bit younger than me. Same age as your wife. <laughs> okay, well it's quite a bit younger than me. But my parents came through the Great Depression. Yeah. They were married right after the stock market crash. And so the result of that, those were very, very tough times. And because of that, they banged into my head the lessons they'd learned. Save some for tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, Share, don't be greedy. You may one day need their help. Uh, live within your means. You have to work hard to make the money for the necessities in life. But you don't run after fancy clothes or big cars as if somehow they make you a better, more important person. I like your person. time. So this is the kind of thing that over and over again they kept telling me. Those lessons seem gone a long time ago. Yeah. And I think we have to relearn a lot of those lessons. Okay. Um, we don't have a lot of time, so instead of exploring that, I'm going to jump to the David Suzuki Foundation. Now, you changed your relationship with that. I think I did. it was last year. Uh, no, several years ago. Okay, now. it's all time for I us. resigned from the board. Yeah. I founded with the uh, the foundation with my wife, yeah. 25 years ago. Yeah. I'm very proud of the organization. Yeah. But every time I shoot off my mouth and talk about climate change and criticize the government. The David Suzuki Foundation gets in trouble Audited. with a government that says we're going to take your charitable license. Yeah. We are now in our third audit. Yeah. And these, believe me, the CRA is punishing people. We're not the only environmental organization. Yeah. The federal government has got a policy of slamming the environmental groups. We, I think there are yeah. about eight or nine environmental groups that are now under audit. Greenpeace, one of, I think. One of them, no, oh, not the, Greenpeace because oh, they're okay. not a charity. You oh, see. right. So, but uh, the reason is, I think Sierra Club, Environmental Defense, a, a whole bunch of them. Yeah. And, uh, the, you know, it really casts a pall on what people do. Yeah. Because of the fear, they're yeah. afraid to say anything. Yeah. But this ad that's running, um, actually it doesn't say David Suzuki Foundation. Oh yes, it does. So you're, you're not on the board, but you're still fellow traveling with them. I volunteer for the foundation a lot. Okay. And uh, I'm very proud of, of the organization. I'm a major donor to the foundation, but I have no 
It, right. When I speak, I do not speak on behalf of the foundation. Right. And I say that each time I, I, yeah. I open my mouth. Including on TV. Um, there's lots of issues to talk about. Uh, I see on the news release that they sent out uh, recent events such as shellfish die-offs on Vancouver Island. Um, which shellfish? These are any shellfish, anything that makes its uh, shell out of calcium carbonate. So these are, I have for years been advocating people on the coast to get into shellfish aqu aquaculture. Yes. I'm against salmon aquaculture. Yeah. But, and I'll tell you about that in a minute because I know a lot of your audience are, are into salmon yeah, aquaculture. Yeah, Campbell River is the salmon capital of BC. Right. In but two it ways. should be the wild salmon aquaculture uh, <laughs> capital. So I've been yeah. encouraging shellfish aquaculture because shellfish yeah. make their shells out of carbon, yeah. calcium carbonate. So they take carbon out of the oceans. Yeah. As the carbon dioxide concentration in the air builds up, at the interface with the ocean, it dissolves in the water as as uh, carbonic acid. Yeah. So the pH of the oceans is dropping and a lot of these organisms depend yeah. on the right okay. pH to begin to make shells. Okay. So we just interviewed someone today down mm -hmm. in uh, Comox. I think it's Comox or... Uh, uh, well there's there's a couple of oyster farms down yeah. there and one of them reported a die-off but that's my point there was only one. The other farms did not have the same die-off well, problem. I don't know about the die-off. What, well, what happened is that the, uh, the scallop farms, they tried to start their farms yeah. with the seedlings uh, and they, didn't, and they yeah. died. Yeah. And that was millions of dollars yeah. that went down the drain. Yeah. And so we interviewed someone this morning who lost his entire crop last year. Yeah. And now what they have to do is actually add alkali to the water they're they're giving yeah. their their baby uh, scallops in yeah. order. but they, they do that on land with water pulled from the ocean this is crazy this is yeah. absolutely crazy yeah okay well, what about the starfish die off do you think well that's i mean related? that's terrifying as well the point is that ecosystems on land and in the oceans are being torn apart yeah. by the fact that the oceans are warming and they and this is causing changes yeah. you know the big thing for me is fishermen are telling me we're, we're seeing Humboldt squid, which are very large animals, yeah. but they're a southern animal. Yeah. They're going, we're catching Humboldt squid by the thousands. Yeah. What the heck are they doing here? Yeah. You know, so the water is changing. T today in Comox, one of the Comox band people came and he said, um, oh, what's the name of that river they, they've got? There's a major uh, Pun Chinook. The Puntledge? Yeah, the Puntledge ri River. There's a major Chinook. Uh, run there that is endangered because yeah. the number has dropped, but the water temperature is more than a degree and a half warmer, yeah. and they won't make it up to the lake they need to get to before yeah. they go up further. But you know that's not a new issue. The the uh, Cowichan River has got the same thing. They've been trucking salmon up to. Cowichan that's what lake. this guy was doing today. Yeah. yeah. So what kind of a world is it yeah. where you can no longer rely on the natural yeah. systems? Yeah. We think that it's a solution by trucking the salmon over the warm yeah. part. You know, this is crazy. Okay. Well, how much of it is natural and then how much of it is anthropogenic? How much of what is natural? Uh, the, the climate change that you're Well, if you about. look at all the curves, uh, the major part of it now is natural. If you think pre-industrial society, the level of... Uh, Carbon in the atmosphere was they estimate about um, 300 and, no, sorry. Uh, it's 200. gone from 038 to 040. It's 360 yeah. up to we're over okay. 400 parts per million. Barely over 400. That's, yeah, but I mean. Yeah, but that's, that's like 0.08. You know, this is 0.04. We've gone from 0.038 to 0.04. What are you talking about now? Temperature? The, the amount of carbon in the atmosphere. 0.08 what? Uh, well, 08 is drinking. You know, 08, 06, alcohol. Oh, I don't. Yeah, know. well, this. You know, if you if you're 08, you get a ticket. I understand. Yeah. So I, if you're 038, uh, that's what it used to be a few years ago. Now it's the amount of carbon in the atmosphere is 0 0.040 percent. Not a big change from 0 0.038 to 0 0.040. Sounds better if you say, oh, it's 400 parts per billion, but it's the same per number. Per million. Yeah. Well, the point is that tiny amounts. When you think of the concentration of hormones in our bodies. Yeah. which can lead to the difference between a male and a female uh, fetus, you're talking parts per billion, a uh, trillion. Yeah. So, you know, just because it's 
you know, that's what people say. Well, I mean, what? Who cares about carbon dioxide? It's yeah. such a small amount. Yeah. But the reality is that small amount yeah. is very, very significant. What do you think about the solar variation things? Like, uh, so, sorry, are you, are you saying that you don't bl believe what the uh, climatologist is saying? Uh, I don't get this line of questioning. Well, uh, I am a skeptic that it's all anthropogenic. I don't believe it. Yeah. Well, how much of it is... Well, I'm just saying, what's you, your authority? You think, I'm, yeah. not, I'm not a climatologist. Yeah. I'm just repeating what I read in, the sci in science. Yeah. Now, you can cherry pick all kinds of stuff and decide anything. You want yeah. to decide the planet's well, flat, flat? You can cherry pick and show yeah. the Earth is flat. Okay. So you tell me you're a skeptic based on what? Well, based on what? Other stuff like the tilt of the Earth and like the wobble what? and the, the orbit. But the, you, the, and you'd think the, these climatologists don't account for this? Of course there are major changes. Yeah that happen over tens of thousands okay. of years. And there are sunspot effects and so on. Yeah. But are you but, telling solar, me... Solar flares are variable you, as well? Are you telling me that that's the evidence that goes against well, thousands I'm of climatologists? I'm asking you how committed you are, and obviously it's, you're convinced. <laughs> the evidence is there. I'm saying yeah. you're a skeptic. Yeah. A skeptic. Why are you skeptical? What is the basis for your skepticism? Well, I'm not going to take up a lot of time. Well, you want to I'd because have, yes. this is absolutely critical. You're going on air. You're yeah. talking to people yeah. and you're telling me that you're a skeptic. I'm saying, yeah. what is the basis for your knowledge? Is it the Bible? Is it the Koran? Uh, certainly not. Or are you cherry picking information? Well, there are lots of people out there yeah. being paid a lot of money by yeah. the fossil fuel industry to yeah. say this is junk science, that yeah. this is no, not real. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not with that. I'm not a fan of pollution. There, I'm not a fan of a lot of stuff that's going wrong in the world. Uh, interestingly, though, the issues that you pick are almost all environmental. Uh, do you get into politics at all, like the Highway of Tears and the residential schools? Of course, they're all. They're all completely uh, integrated. For 25 years, yeah. the David Suzuki Foundation has had a policy of working with First Nations and where, yeah. wherever we go. Yeah. The environment is not a special area that's somehow, somehow separate from issues of hunger and poverty, well, that's of something social we justice. With. These are all tied in together. Yeah. 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 Um, looking at your career, I think, did it really start at Haida Gwaii? Was that one of no. your, no? It started at UBC well, with Drosophilia? Career? Started when I was a kid. Yeah, went fishing with my dad and cared about uh, yeah. going camping and yeah. and hiking. Isn't that how we all get started? Yeah. Well, I was at UBC when you were there, and you were doing Drosophila, which is fruit flies, and then the CBC discovered you. And yeah. it's been quite a career, eh? <laughs> no, well, we've uh, had a good relationship. Yeah, I started my career in television in 1962. Wow. And at that, that time, my concern was that science is by far the most important area in society today. Yeah. You as a skeptic should think about that, that science is by far the best way we know about what's going on in the world around. Yeah. And the ignorance that we have as a Canadian society about science led me to say, we got to start educating people yeah. about why science is important and how it affects yeah. our lives. Yeah. Now, the, one of the things is the uh, die-off of the uh, trees, the pine beetle issue. Yeah, well, that's yeah, I, exactly what I'm you expect from climate change. Yeah. But yeah. your issue is not questioning that. Your issue is what's causing the climate change. Yeah, and you say it's almost entirely human? I or don't say you? that. It's no. what scientists are telling okay. me. And, you know, there are organizations of the top scientists in all the countries that, that do science. In the United States, the National Academy of Sciences is the top 5% of all yeah. science. The Royal Society of England, the Royal Society in Canada, Russia, China, all of those organizations of the top scientists say climate change caused by humans is real and it's urgent that we do something about it. Well, now that's enough authority for me, I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. No, you don't have to apologize. You well, made I your just point regret that I obviously <laughs> haven't reached you if you're still a skeptic. I'm sorry. Well, I appreciate your advice. And, you know, like I like Andrew Weaver, the green MLA down in Victoria right now. And uh, he used to be on the IPP International IPCC. I hope he still is. No, actually. He resigned because, oh, that's, that's uh, because he had more time to spend as an MLA. But... Um, how about urban gardens and food self-sufficiency? Do, do you or the David Suzuki Foundation work in that? I think it's terrific. Yeah. 
Now, I think the interesting thing is if you go to a city like Vancouver, there's a whole revolution in urban gardening, art gardening that's yeah. going on. It's being led by young people. Yeah. We've got a whole generation of young people who grew up not knowing that Kentucky Fried Chicken is a bird. I mean, our relationship with food has been very, very weird yeah. for a long time. So I'm thrilled that young people are getting involved. Yeah. But I'll tell, again, you know, this is really urgent. When my uh, eldest daughter with Tara was born 35 years ago, we said we want our children to grow up knowing that food is seasonal. So let's develop a ritual to celebrate the seasonality of food. So for 35 years, at the end of June, we've always gone to the ok Okanagan and pick cherries. Hmm. And we pick more and more because we send cherries to our First Nations. Uh, last year we picked 700 pounds, sent them out because a lot of First Nations communities never get fresh fruit. Yeah. And uh, I wrote the orchard, I emailed the orchard uh, this year and said, it's an organic orchard. So I said, I'm coming in, I can't come in before July 1st. I usually go in end of June, July 1st. And they emailed back and said, the cherries are three yes. weeks early. They'll be yeah. done by then. Yeah. Okay, you can still be a skeptic, but uh, something's going well, on. Well, obviously, there's, there's certainly variation, but let's not. Uh, what do you think of BC government's the Climate Action Plan 2.0? It all is in the, uh, in, in the way that it's imposed. Our government isn't serious about climate change. The BC here's, a, here's a BC government that the Liberal Party passed a carbon tax, you know, is touted as this great thing. This... Premier comes in, you know, oh yeah, we care about the climate, but hey, full speed ahead with fracking, and let's get those pipelines built. Oh well, we'll have to be careful, maybe six rule, but, but basically I've, I've attended meetings where Christy Clark is a cheerleader for the fossil fuel industry that is going to make that plan, which is still not big deep enough, a joke. Yeah. So I say, Let's get it all together. Stop trying to be an environmentalist to this group, uh, an en a pro-energy person. You're, she's making major commitments now. The, the dam at Site C on the Peace River. We fought that 35 years ago and stopped it. And yet she now has to build it because an LNG plant, one LNG plant, will take the equivalent of the energy from the Site C dam. She wants to build 16 or something. Where the hell are you going to get all that energy? Yeah. This is just nuts. Yeah. Uh, what's your view of federal politics these days? Well, I uh, don't pay much attention to it because, quite frankly, we've had a government for 10 years now for whom the environment is not just an, an issue of low concern, it's of no concern. And they have demonized environmentalists, as I told you. They're, they're pressing the CRA. They've got yeah. a special fund yeah. to go after environmentalists, yeah. trying to get rid of them. But, you know, it's just what kind of a government do we have? Uh, do we have that doesn't want to know anything about climate change. Mr. Harper spent five days in the Arctic recently, never once mentioned the issue of climate, which is hammering the Arctic. Yeah. If you look at his latest budget, there's nothing in there about climate or the environment. Now, if you were the CEO of a company and you deliberately ignored information that was important to the running of that company, you can be thrown in jail for that. It's called willful blindness. And I say that our federal government has willfully ignored the vast bulk of, of information on an effect of something that's going to affect Canadians more than any other industrialized nation. Because climate change is going to affect the, the polar northern areas much more than the others. We're already being hammered by it. We're a northern yeah. country. Do you see any hope in the NDP or the federal liberals? I, uh, I would hope anything would be better than the current hosti hostility of government. Yeah. But quite frankly, if uh, people started going to all candidates' meetings and demanding of all parties, what is your position about climate because that affects my children and my grandchildren, and keep hammering and make it a part of what they have to respond to. I don't care what party goes in. Yeah. How about the Green Party? The Green Party, I, you know, I support Elizabeth because she's. I think she's a great politician. But I've always said there shouldn't be a Green Party. Look at the media. The media act as if when there's a, a debate with the leaders, and since the Greens didn't have a, a member of Parliament, the Greens couldn't get on the debate. And what did the journalists all do? Oh, 
Well, the greens aren't here, so we don't have to talk about the environment. What? The greens don't own the environment is an issue. The environment should not be a political football. Everybody should be facing it. And I say that's why it doesn't matter to me what party is in. We've got to keep raising it and making it something yeah. politicians yeah. act on. How do you feel about Al Gore? Oh, I, he's a friend of mine. He's a great yeah. guy. Yeah. Uh, Obama doing a good job? Or? Obama was a, is a big disappointment. Yeah. How come I'm suddenly a political pundit? I'm not a political well, pundit. You obviously, you have an insight into environmental issues, and uh, yeah, I'm yeah, not so. an American. I mean, I don't get it. What uh, what mm. what difference does it make what I think of Obama? Well, Obama was huge for me because he was black, yeah. and to think I am sure Martin Luther King never dreamed his children would live to see a black man as president of the United States. It's, yeah. it's an astounding achievement. Um, do you have a place on Quadra or Cortez? I do. Yeah. So you come up here fairly often. I, I wanted to play some Qu Cortez, but that last ferry was yeah. a killer. Yeah. So you moved to Quadra now, is that? Well, I had hoped to retire there. Yeah. But uh, my wife's mother, dad and mother have lived with us for 45 years. And uh, I realized I can't move and they're so old. Well, my dad's yeah. uh, father-in-law finally died. Yeah. Uh, but my mother-in-law is 96 and I, she wouldn't yeah. move to Quadra. And, uh, yeah. Well, uh, Part of the reason I'm going there is uh, airline flights uh, and, you know, like ferry fares, they burn energy as well, of course. But uh, when you fly, do you buy offsets or? I do, but that's not the same thing as we need. Yeah. Offsets, I buy, uh, and the foundation has uh, uh, information on this. Oh, okay. Planting trees is not a solution yeah. or even an, a valid offset because those trees have to grow and they have to last for hundreds of years or else you're just adding the carbon back in. Yeah. But the United Nations has what they call gold standard offsets. And this is the money that goes into, into putting solar panels and windmills that wouldn't be built without that money into the developing world. Yeah. So we prevent the developing world from having to use fossil fuels to generate electricity yeah. by installing uh, windmills and uh, Do you solar. like windmills? I'm a great fan of windmills. What about the bird kill? Uh, it's negligible? Or? Of course it kills birds, and you're stupid if you put it up where birds migrate through. Yeah. But, you know, I always, I've always i talked to Margaret Atwood about this because she gave me hell one day and said, you like windmills and they kill birds. I said, Margaret, if you're concerned about birds, and it sh you should be concerned, yeah. then you should kill every cat going. You should get all the high-rise apartments broken down yeah. and stop all highway driving yeah. because cars, cats, and high-rises are yeah. kill Billions of birds every year. Yeah, and bees, the neonicotinoids. Yeah, uh, well, I, I, in a way, I think neonicotinoids are a worse problem than global warming. Now, that's my opinion. What do you think of neonicotinoids? Well, neonics are like, like uh, 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 chemical pesticides. They're, it's a dumb way to control yeah. nature. But neonics, the way they're doing it now, so that the seed grows up in every part of the plant, has got that uh, that toxin. It's Again, they're using genetic engineering to yeah. do something that is incredibly harmful of the bees. Yeah. Bees are particularly sensitive. Yeah. Now, we've talked to Kathleen Wynne in, in Ontario. They have put a ban on, on the uh, industrial use, but they're under unbelievable pressure. The uh, chemical industry is toying with suing the, the provincial government because of uh, the NAFTA. You have a, a NAFTA agreement that says yeah. we don't have the right to shut down yeah. a company uh, from, even yeah. though it's our laws, yeah. we don't have the right to do that yeah. under NAFTA. Is TPP going to make it worse? What's TPP? Uh, there's, there's a Trans-Pacific, uh, there's a world trade uh, agreement being negotiated in secret right now. I have no yeah. idea. Yeah. If it's secret, how would I know about it? Well, they've been talking about it behind the scenes and you obviously got pretty good sources, but you I know. I've never heard no, of it. Okay. Um, where do you see the world five and ten and twenty years from now? I don't know. It all depends on, you know, you can carry out all the curves. Yeah. If you just project the curves with business as usual, yeah. uh, we're in deep trouble. But the reality is the world, we have no precedent for the warming that's going on. Yeah. Even though, you know, it's only about a degree. Yeah. Already we're seeing changes that I never imagined. Yeah. I used to call it a slow motion catastrophe. 
yeah. I really thought we had 80, 90 years to act yeah. on it. Yeah, Instead, it's even with a 0.7 degree change, the ecosystem changes have been monumental. I mean, yeah. the mountain pine beetle is yeah. just one small example of do, it. Do you think the environment change is going to get us before World War does? I have no. How? What? what is, how come <laughs> I'm supposed to know all this? Well, I am not a pundit, for God's sake. Well, you no, really. I mean, I have no idea. Your CBC show shows that you know an awful lot about a lot I have, of stuff. We have a so lot I think of it's a fair question. I'm, look, you know. You think that you know everything that you come on an air and talk about? Well, I try and background myself no. a bit. Yeah, <laughs> it depends on what all the people clip for you. Come on now. No, this is my own clipping, David. Okay, okay. And here's well, the uh, banks smart. find $5 billion for rigging, rigging okay. currencies. I think it's you're terrible. You're smarter than I am. Sorry. No, you're not. I don't uh, know everything. Uh, well, you've done well. Anyway, uh, we've only got about two minutes left. Is there something you'd like to tell the audience? It's your program, not mine, so okay. uh, whatever well, you want. We're rebroadcasting this, and as you're watching, it'll be 6 p.m. David's event tonight in town at Thunderbird Hall at 7 p.m. Should be interesting. I'll be there nonetheless. So thank you very much, Mr. Suzuki, for coming in. Pleasure. Thank you, Shaw, for doing this, and volunteers for helping, too. There's a special edition to talk about here on Shaw TV.